Hello everybody, this is the old bear from the old bear's den of Bigfoot, and yes, I'm moving the camera, I know, you're going to come and complain, some of them, too bad, I moved it a little bit, anyway, I'm just picking, just calm down. Uh, this video comes to you, is one of the ones I did Saturday night. <clears throat> and it comes out of Stokes County, North Carolina. And uh, these three gentlemen were going uh, catfishing on, on a, at a family farm pond in Stokes County, North Carolina. It was summer. He doesn't remember the exact month uh, because it's been over 10 years ago. Possibly could have been June or July. Uh, as they were getting ready, they uh, gathered up some wood, packed up all their fishing gear, along with a Winchester 12 gauge, pump, shotgun, and a cheap 380 caliber pistol uh, into his dad's uh, farm track, farm truck, as night fell. Uh, they pulled into the dam of the uh, pond and made their way up the bank. Uh, on the right side of the uh, the pond and as it had a good clear area less chance of getting tangled up with our lines we unloaded the truck unloaded the wood from the truck and built a fire they left the shotgun in the cab of the truck and carried the 380 with them in case they ran across that snake and snakes at night suck <laughs> that's my personal opinion uh, so there was really not any chance of danger. Uh, they never had any bear sightings around there or anything of that nature. And being on private property, not a lot of two-leg predators come around. Uh, so they uh, got their lines in the water. If they got the fire built, uh, they didn't get any bites. Uh, but they were having a great time just hanging out and uh, poking fun at each other. You know, just a guy thing. Uh, let's see, he, uh, said he'd hunted the area for years, never seen anything nor heard anything to make, uh, make him worry, uh, as the night went on, still no bites, but I did hear some dogs in the distance barking very loud and getting closer. So I thought I might need to get the shotgun out of the truck as we have had some packs of dogs roaming the area. They, being wild, tend to attack people's pets and livestock. I did not carry a flashlight as a truck was parked on a dam about 15, 20 yards away, and the fire we had gave enough light to walk as I got to the to walk to the truck. As I got to the truck, I reached through the window and pulled the shotgun out by the stock. As I turned to walk back to the fire, I heard this growl uh, that I can only describe as a demonic goat. I know that sounds funny, people, but it's his words. But I can't think of another way to say it. It was a sound that you could feel. Hmm. I had my shotgun in what's called cruiser safe condition. The tube magazine had five shells loaded, but nothing in the chamber and on safety. Uh, this was his personal shotgun. He used it on his job also. And he'd fired hundreds of rounds uh, through the gun. Uh, he said, it, uh, but at that moment, my heart rate went up and I had to remind myself to push the safety off. And fumble with the safety for a few seconds and then rack the action. Point the shotgun in the direction of the noise and fired as it sounded to be 30 feet from me. But it was dark and in thick pine trees that night. I had took my double op buckshot that was issued out and put my personal double op buck and topped it off with number eight shot in case we saw a snake. No reason to re waste a double op buck, but he wishes he changed his mind. Whatever it was, it sounded like it moved about 20 feet by the sound of heavy footsteps that I could hear after firing a 12 gauge with no hearing protection. So I know it was large. It then stopped and again let out this growl you could feel, and I racked the action on the shotgun this time, preparing to send some double hot buck shot in its direction by this time. 
Jay, uh, one of his, uh, the younger buddy, uh, was yelling at him, stop, stop firing you. Uh, he said, you're probably shooting at some, somebody messing with us. You're going to kill them. And he hauled back to his buddy. He said, uh, well, they picked the wrong time to try it, but I knew this was no human. And my other buddy did, too, as he knew, as he armed, armed himself with the pistol from the tackle box. And my other friend had grabbed an axe. We packed up the gear that night and left. I have not been back night fishing at that spot. I told my family of this event at first. At first, everybody got a good laugh. And my one buddy that picked up the 380 kept it with him the rest of the time he was there. He spent with us on his vacation. Uh, a few weeks later, a neighbor who liked to walk the trails on our property heard it too. She was walking her dogs and it let out a out that growl she said her dogs ran and left her and and she had to run home as hunting season and as hunting season came around a family friend went to hunt on our property he told us he heard it also he said it was right getting nightfall and it circled him in the trees making the same noise like it did with us and never saw it that man would openly tell you he would not set foot on our property without a gun the lesson i learn and still do to this day i keep my shotgun in cruiser safe condition shells in the tube and off safety so all i have to do is work the action and fire later i heard another neighbor had a calf attacked and something ripped its skin almost off people blamed coyotes some say it was a mountain lion. I know better. There is no mountain lions in that area. The biggest cat around is a bobcat, and I have heard them before. No, this was no, this was larger and a lot bigger, just by the sound of the growl. And that concludes the story from Stokes County, North Carolina. I hope you all enjoy it, and we will see you all next time. Bye-bye.